<clears throat> so I, just to piggyback on what was just shared, this is a celebration of life. Um, as Paula reminded me, as we have been talking through um, recent weeks, she reminded me of something I guess I had forgotten, uh, that Suzanne, when she was in her early 20s, I remembered this part, she had Hodgkin's and melanoma. Well, what I had forgotten was how serious it was, how low the percentage was that she would survive. And she reminded me of that. And Suzanne, she said, you know, as she was in this last year, she said, I've been living on borrowed time. I've had 40 years that I have been able to live. And live, she did. Uh, as you all, because you know her, you know uh, what an amazing woman she was. And as my older sister, um, I always admired Suzanne. You know, I was always looked up to her. Um, she had long-term friendships that she treasured. She had friends that from her high school years, from growing up, there are those of you in this room, that to me is amazing. She was an expert knitter, um, and I will share with you all, we just, uh, as a family, went through her sweater so that they could stay with the family um, because her knitting was amazing. Uh, and I, she was an expert seamstress. She was my mentor and my guide as an older sister, especially through the teenage years, a as well as, you know, I went to her for advice and guidance. Um, when I was a teenager, she exemplified generosity to me. One of the ways that she did that is um, as a young 20-something who didn't have a lot of money, she took me up to the city to go see theater and then took me to dinner. That was, I loved it. It was amazing. It was something I hadn't been able to experience, and she did that for me. Um, another example of a characteristic, this is very strong for Suzanne, is her sense of fairness, her um, honesty. Uh, we were walking out of Mayfield Mall. Some of you might remember Mayfield Mall. Uh, we were walking out of Mayfield Mall, and there was a $10 bill on the ground. And my instinct was, grab it and run, right? <laughs> well, what she said is, she said, no, no, we've got to take this, take it to the mall office, see if anyone claims it. Now, I have no idea what happened to that $10. I don't remember that at all. But what I do remember is it taught me a lesson of being honest, of not taking what is not mine. And it stuck with me. Um, Suzanne was strong, tenacious, till the very end, I will say. Uh, she would work out problems. If there was something she was trying to figure out, she would work it through to the end. Uh, she was tenacious through the years of on and off dealing with cancer. Um, she would... She, <laughs> I won't be okay. Oh, I've got to stay on track here. I just don't want to go too far off. Um, just a little background on Suzanne. Uh, she, my parents lived near Paris when she was a young child. So Marlies and Suzanne lived in Paris and then in Germany. And I think many of you realize and know how much she valued travel. Well, I think that influenced her. From the very get-go, she was exposed to different countries, to different cultures, to different foods. And I think it even influenced her interest in Doctor Who, who was the ultimate traveler, right? So um, there we go. And I, I am on the topic of Doctor Who. One thing I am, <laughs> I am just a stand-up comic, what can I say? Um, I am so grateful because Suzanne and I were able to go to conventions together, Doctor Who conventions, but what I'm even more grateful for is that my kids got to go with me, and so Suzanne got to have quality time with both of my kids, and they got to know their Aunt Suzanne, even though we lived a distance away. Uh, my favorite memory is just, it's because Suzanne loved to laugh, and in, in her younger years, I think things were lighter and brighter. At these conventions, it was just my, just looking over at her, and her laughing at the stories of what went on behind the scenes. Um, Suzanne was super smart. She could speak on almost any topic. 
and she could speak a lot. She loved to discuss her garden, uh, opera, birds, England, good books, technology, science. These are things that we would converse on. And I think if, if I were to ask her, what are your favorite activities? It was always about conversing with someone. It was about relationship. But she had this interesting dichotomy because she lived in, she had a classic taste in clothes. She lived in an old home. She was surrounded by antiques in her home. And yet on the other hand, she spent most of her hours at work linked to all things high tech as a data security analyst. So it's just this interesting um, combination that she had. Uh, loved food, and that was one of the scriptures that was chosen because it was mentioning food, and from all different cultures. It, because of being in France, she had that culture culture piece. Um, our grandfather was from Yugoslavia, and so she was introduced to that. And then it primed the pump for when she went to UC Berkeley. Because in UC Berkeley, there were people from all over, and she got introduced to Ethiopian, Indian food, all foods from different parts of Asia. And she brought that back to our family. So Suzanne was a real influencer. She influenced those that she was around. Um, cats. <laughs> She loved cats, of course. So what I want to share about cats is I was thinking about her travels. Do you realize that whenever she communicated to me in her travels, postcards, emails, it was all about the cats that she would meet? <laughs> so um, really, there is no way that I can express Suzanne, because Suzanne, in, in, in so few words, I mean, she was amazingly complex, um, wonderfully expressive, in the way that she would speak, uh, and, and I, I will just miss her so much. Um, what I want to do now is um, one of her uh, good co-worker friends, Randy, he would have loved to have been here, but um, he couldn't make it, so he wrote something out. Now, I need to let you know that Randy has a very strong sense of humor, and that's why I think they got along very well. Uh, he had different names for, for, for Suzanne. One of them was Francine. With me, and for, I don't know if there are any of her co-workers here, but I think you might know Francine. Uh, but Randy and I called Suzanne Madame de Pompadour. So he calls, so in, um, as I'm reading, you'll hear him talk to Madame. Um, so he says, I first met Suzanne during my second week at Schwab. I was going into a design meeting, and right before, walked, right before I walked into the room, the person leading me turned around and said, Oh, she's here. I had no idea who they were talking about and walked in to see a well-dressed woman sitting off to the side with a sneer on her face that pretty much said it all. I assumed she was the she that I was warned about. About halfway through the meeting, someone said something ridiculous, and we both, at the same time, firmly said, that is one of the stupidest things I've ever heard. And from then on, we realized we were kindred spirits, <laughs> who both loved chocolate, mainframe security, juicy Euro trash gossip, Celtic redheads, Doctor Who, I aming, in a cross between Pepe, Pepe Le Plu, Franglaise, and with a healthy dose of Yiddish. Uh, Suzanne is, and in quotes, he, or in parentheses, he writes, I refuse to use the past tense. Truly a Renaissance woman. Her varied interests, talents, and enjoyment of the ridiculous made many of us smile. She's also a dear friend who never gave up, no matter what life threw at her and certainly wouldn't allow you to wallow in self-pity. No matter how crappy a day I was having, a quick round of IMs over seemingly mundane subjects, such as how delightfully and politefully rude Parisian society was, to each other uh, at the turn of the century, um, that could bring a smile to my face. And I'm sure that she was having a good laugh on the other end as well. There's an old saying that you'll continue to live as long as people remember you. And, ma chère madame, you'll live forever in our hearts. 
and probably some I am log files that God help anyone who tries to decipher. Is it true what they say about the switching in Z Dixie? I don't know if I'm mispronouncing that at all, but basically that's what he wrote. Uh, so right before I left Suzanne's house in October, after spending a few days helping her out, I told her that I'd love her until the little black dress went out of style. She paused for a moment to collect her thoughts and looked at me and said, God help me, you'll be stalking me until the end of time, and then told me to get out and back, and back to my life. But leave the Franco mints. 